All right, this is paper two, 2019, question one. This first question is about SI units, common physical quantities and their units. Before you continue, I want you to download the, from the link in the description, this SI units chart, if you don't have one already, and try and match the units to their quantities. Some of them like weight and power, you need to know the relationship between the variables that make up this quantity or how they're related. So you need to know the formula is what I'm saying in order to derive the unit. So the way that the quantities are related in order to get, to calculate power or to calculate weight, that tells you what the unit is gonna be. So I'm gonna start with weight because that one's a little simpler. You might be looking for the unit Newton, and that's not there. So I'm like, you know, I've been told that weight is a force. I don't see Newton. Newton is the unit of force, as you see right here. Okay, but we can break down a Newton into base quantities. We're told that we know that a force is a derived quantity or derived unit. So it has a derived unit. That means that it, a Newton is just a special name for a group of base units. So in this case, the units that make up a Newton or the definition of a Newton is the unit for mass, which is kilogram, multiplied by the unit for acceleration due to gravity, which is mass, sorry, meters per second squared. Okay, and so that is where this comes from. So this is the unit that we're going to use here. We're going to follow a similar procedure for power. So power is equal to you might know energy over time, but power is also equal to weight over time. I'm sorry, work over time. Work is equal to force times distance. So if we break that down even further, and then we look at the units, the unit of force multiplied by the unit for distance over time is going to give us, so in this case, we're going to use the Newton. Okay, so we have Newton and then meters, that's the distance unit and seconds for time. So that works out to be Newton meters per second. That's where that one comes from. Calculate the acceleration of a car traveling at a velocity of 20 meters per second and comes to a stop in 2.5 seconds. Okay, so let's write down what we know. The initial velocity of the car the initial velocity of the car is 20 meters per second. So the I, or you might see in some books U, is equal to 20 meters per second. We're told that it comes to a stop. So that means that its final velocity of the F is zero meters per second. And all this happens in 2.5 seconds. That's the time interval, 2.5 seconds. Everything is an SI unit, so no need to convert anything. We're good to go. Now time to pull out our equation. So the formula for acceleration is final velocity minus initial, initial velocity all over the time, okay? Some formulas you might see T2 minus T1, but they've already worked that out for us, and we know that that is 2.5, so we don't need to do that. So now it's time to substitute. So VF comes first, so that's zero. It's not bigger number minus smaller number. It's final minus initial, okay? So zero minus 20 meters per second all over 2.5. When we work that out, that's going to give us a negative. 8 meters per second squared, which is the unit of acceleration. 
okay? It's going to be negative because it's slowing down. In order to come to a stop, the speed has to decrease. So we expect a negative acceleration, okay? So we would say that the car is decelerating. All right, and that's the end of question one.